So what's going on guys, I'm Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another video on the channel where today we are going to be looking at even crazier conspiracy theories within Call of Duty Zombies. I've already done, I would say, two or three videos showcasing some pretty insane conspiracies that we've had in Zombies over the years, but because we've got so many Zombies games starting from 2008 all the way up until now, that means because of the way Zombies is, how mysterious and secretive everything is, especially the storyline, there are many conspiracies surrounding this mode. So, as always, if you haven't checked out the previous videos, I will leave the links to them down in the description. Check them out after you've watched this one. Don't forget to drop a like rating by the end if you do enjoy and subscribe, but let's get into it. So, the first big one and the one that I'm probably most interested in being a storyline person is the hidden city underneath Shadows of Evil. This was the first map on Black Ops 3 Zombies and was very different to any iteration of Zombies we'd seen previously compared to World at War Be a One or two, Black Ops 3 Shadows of Evil introduced to us what we thought at the time were aliens. Now we know that, okay, they're not really aliens, they're the Apothecans or the Keepers. But anyway, the map takes place in a fictional city which is called Morg City. If you look around above ground, you will see it looks relatively normal. It looks like a 1940s city in America, which is what it's supposed to be based off, Chicago. Some of the buildings do look a little bit weird and funky, I guess you could describe them. But besides from the growing fungus and the tentacle creatures, there's nothing too irregular about the city. However, if you go underground, where the Pack-a-Punch is located, you will notice things start to look a little bit different. There is a massive cavern where if you look down, you will see another city. One that seems to go on for infinity. Because of the red smoke and the mist, you can't see an end to it. We don't know how big this underground city is, but it looks pretty big and the architecture doesn't look too different to what we are familiar with. With windows and doors balconies. There is the big main building in the middle that goes straight down. There's also construction behind the Pack-a-Punch. So the question has always been, well, why is this here? Why is there a hidden city underneath Shadows of Evil? Who made it? Who resides here? Or what? Well, because this is in a conspiracy theory video, of course, we don't have an official answer. It's never been told to us by Treyarch. It's not noted in the Canorium why this underground city exists. There is a radio message in the map that you can find from the reporter who was reporting back to Mr. Rapt, who we know was the Shadow Man. Basically, if you're not familiar with the storyline, the Shadow Man sent this reporter to Morg City to gather a report on what was going on here because some strange things were happening, such as meteors crashing all over the place and, like I said earlier, strange fungus and plants growing everywhere. Things weren't normal, but when the reporter arrived at the city and started to speak to the locals, this is what he had to say. Hey, Mr. Rapt. So, I went by the market again today. For some reason, the fruit seller was much more talkative. Even if what he said was more than a little crazy. He told me that when he was a boy, his uncle would get drunk and start talking about how a dark force cast its shadow over the city. How good and evil were battling right on our doorstep. And that the only thing holding back the forces of the apocalypse was the ancient order of the keepers. Well, even if what he said was more than a little crazy, I'm not sure he was. Even though they're scared, or maybe because they are, people are talking more. Asking around, I've heard more than a few whispers about this ancient order and the keepers. I think it's some kind of cult. They say you can hear them chanting sometimes. From beneath the city. There's all these rumors about human sacrifices and freaky shit that even the police won't investigate. Because they've been paid off? Or because they're too damn scared? I'm not sure what to believe anymore. So the reporter tells us that when he was speaking to locals, one of them told us that when he was a boy, his uncle would talk about a dark force that had been cast over the city, about how good and evil were battling right on his doorstep, and that the only thing holding them back were the keepers. But the reporter also said, as he spoke to more and more locals, he began to hear whispers about this ancient order of the keepers, and that some of the locals could hear them chanting beneath the city. So that might give us a little bit of a hint as to who lived in this underground city in Shadows of Evil, the Keepers. If the locals above ground say they could hear chanting sometimes underneath them, and it was the Keepers who kept this city safe from forces of evil, then there's a good chance that it was the Keepers who lived here. And if they did, then it was them who built it as well. Now, there are many other questions that come along with that. Well, why? Why did the Keepers decide to build a city here if it was them who built it? It just gives us more and more questions that we don't have answers to. But you will know if you've played them out yourself, as a part of opening up the Pack-a-Punch machine, you have to place down the worms which will repair the walls. And you will see on these walls are stone carvings of the Great War. The war that took place between the Apothecans, the Keepers and premise. If that's the case, well the Great War took place a very, very long time ago. So was this city built 
then we do know with old Roman cities, for example, they used to be a lot lower down than they are now. Street level thousands of years ago was a lot lower, and still to this day we are digging down and discovering those old Roman cities, or at least parts of them, pathways, pavements, foundations of buildings. It seems like Morgue City was built on top of this underground city, so I would question, well, did the people who built Morgue City know this underground city existed below it? At one time, maybe thousands of years ago, this underground city was actually street level, and it wasn't underground. It was an above ground city that's only underground now because it was built on top of. Maybe at one time it wasn't hidden like it is now. There are many theories that you can come up with. I think it was built by the Keepers a very long time ago to protect Morgue City, but that answer is just a theory. The next conspiracy I want to talk about are the broken perks we find in Mob of the Dead. Now, I don't think there's too much to this one, but because I've done a lot of Q&A videos over the years, it is a question that's constantly asked in zombies, and that is, why are there two broken perk machines in Mob of the Dead? If you go outside onto the docks, you can see in the distance both Mule Kick and PhD Flopper sitting up against boxes inactive. Two perk machines that we are very familiar with that we've used in zombies previously, but on this map in Mob of the Dead, they weren't available for us to use, but we could see them on the docks out of order. So why were these perks even put here? Now, breaking the fourth wall, I would say the answer is Troyot just wanted to tease us. Similar to how in Die Rise, when you drop down the elevator and you get a glimpse of PhD Flopper in the corridor, but you can't use it. That's just Troyot teasing us, basically laughing at us because PhD Flopper would have been very useful for us to use in Die Rise. They knew that, so they didn't want to give it to us to use in that map. I think that's what they've done in Mob of the Dead. They've showed us PhD Flopper and Mule Kick because they would have been quite useful to use in Mob of the Dead, but Troyot decided to tease us instead of actually letting us use them. However, is there a storyline reason here? Well, Mob of the Dead isn't exactly like all other zombies maps because this one takes place in purgatory. Hence why if you run around the map, the actual perk machines that we can use, Juggernaut, Double Tap, etc, kind of phase in and out, almost as if they're not really here. Or one minute they are and then the next minute they're not, like they're struggling with reality. That's because Mob of the Dead is set in purgatory, the afterlife. And so because of that, we do see a lot of strange things happen that usually wouldn't in our zombies maps and this is definitely a strange thing logically you would think okay they must have been put here by someone but we know who that someone is that's dr monty he is the one who gives us our perks in our zombies maps they were made by people like group 935 or the ascension group and then are transported from map to map by dr monty so you would think he must have put them here but why i can't see any valid reason the whole point of him giving us perks is just to continue the endless cycle to keep us our characters alive so why deprive us of these perks for that reason i'm struggling to give you an answer that would actually make sense because well in my head there isn't one but to me the one that makes the most sense is there's no real logic behind it it's just an easter egg given to us by the developers you're not supposed to put any thought into it but knowing Treyarch, well you never know the next conspiracy theory, which I think is one of the more unbelievable ones, is that the farmhouse in Transit belonged to Misty and her family. This idea has been floated around ever since Transit released back in 2012. I have absolutely no idea where it came from, but is there any truth to it? Well, if we look at Misty's background, actually not too much is known about her, other than she used to work at a bar called The Boathouse. She had several boyfriends, all of whom she dumped, and she used to live on a farm, I'm assuming, with her parents. Her mother died of an unknown cause and her father was killed by zombies. But the important part that stands out there is that she used to live on a farm and what do we have in transit? One of the main areas is called farm. So people were saying that Misty used to live here. But besides from that, there's really no evidence to back this up. There were also rumours that her father was Dempsey. I think mainly because they both say hurrah. We know Dempsey was a marine misty's father was also a marine but of course the big plot hole here being well we know misty's father was killed by zombies and dempsey wasn't so that one's not true either and i very much doubt that this wild conspiracy is as well the next one is surrounding sergeant frank woodsy's 115 tattoo if you look at his character model you will notice he has tattoos all over his body strangely enough you will notice the location where his 115 tattoo is actually only appears on one mission and that's called executive order on every other mission that you see woods in this tattoo is changed to this sog tog i think that says but like i said on the mission executive order which coincidentally or maybe uncoincidentally takes place on the same map as ascension does in zombies because that map is taken from the campaign but in this mission his tattoo changes to the numbers 115 now the numbers 115 is connected to zombies element 115 it is a major part of the zombie story especially back then during black ops 1 element 115 is what created the zombies but the question is why does woods have 
these numbers tattooed on his body. Does it have any relation to zombies? Is it an easter egg? I actually made a video on this years and years ago as a part of my Q&A series, and I went back to look in the comment section to see if any people had an answer, and I did see someone say, thank god this has been explained to us now, but I've played all of the Black Ops games, every campaign, I mean, I can't remember every single moment off the top of my head, but having done a bit more research, I still can't seem to find that answer that that person is talking about, so perhaps this has been explained to us now and I'm just unaware of it, but if it hasn't, then it's still a valid question. Not only why does his tattoo change in the executive order mission, but also why does he have the numbers 115 tattooed on his body? Is it something personal to him? Is it related to his kill count? Does it have a military meaning behind it? Or is it an easter egg towards zombies? Back in the day, the campaign and zombies weren't as connected as they are now. We know now in Cold War, we even have Frank Woods as an operator. You can play as him in zombies. And even back then, the campaign and zombies universe were intertwined. We have Reznov, for example. We heard about him in Guard Groovy. But if we don't have an official answer, then I think it is just a little bit weird and suspicious how his tattoo changes to 115 on the mission Executive Order, which is the map that Ascension takes place on. A zombies map. Maybe it was just a zombies teaser in the campaign. We've had plenty of those as well. This could just be another one. I don't know. Next, we have Dempsey's mysterious death in Revelations. If you don't know what I'm about, well, since Revelations is the last map in Black Ops 3 Zombies, in that final ending cutscene, we see our characters, Richtoff and Takio, Nikolai and Dempsey, drink the blood vials and continue the endless cycle. They are sent back to the beginning, back to the Great War, and the cycle resets. They are then reborn again where we meet them hundreds of years later in Origins. But there is a cipher in this map, which is this one, where once decoded, it reads this. I am the last of us, but I will be joining you soon, my friends. Death is near. I hope what I have done doesn't come back to bite this universe in the ass. Thank God we will all be gone, because if Monty ever found this place, we would be in a world ton of shit. Maybe now, with us all gone, the children will truly be safe. D. I'm assuming D means... Dempsey. So if this message is from him, well, it doesn't make sense because we saw nothing of the sorts take place in the zombie story up until that point, or even now. Dempsey talking about him joining his friend soon and how he's dying and that he's hiding somewhere and the children will be safe. Nothing like that ever happened in the zombie story, which leaves us questioning, well, when did this take place? And I think the likely answer is, this is an alternate ending that we never got to witness. If you take a look at certain trailers that we've had throughout the years, some of them show us things that we otherwise wouldn't know happened. For example, in the Zetsubo Noshima one, we see Richtofen getting eaten by a thrasher. We also see in that same one, Takio kills, I think it's Richtofen and Dempsey, or Nikolai. Either way, he kills his premise friends. We see them lying dead on the floor. Canically, Nothing of the sorts ever happened, which tells us because we know our zombie storyline took place in a cycle, there were other events that happened outside of the cycle. Everything that happened within the cycle was normal. There were normal events that were supposed to happen, but there were also other events that took place where, for example, our characters died multiple times. But what happened was whenever something deviated, the cycle was reset, which if they died would involve them being brought back to life. So what we see here is more than likely an alternate ending to revelations one where instead of what we see happens where dr monty resets the cycle and sends primus back to the great war this time around primus hid from dr monty so that the children would be safe but they ended up dying which for me is a hell of a lot more interesting than the ending that we actually got so there we go, a bunch of conspiracy theories within Call of Duty Zombies. As always, hopefully you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure that you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos on the channel. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.